In the world of real estate, you might hear the phrase location, 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 meaning that if your business is in a place that is hard to find or get to, you don't do a lot of business. Well, the same holds true for stock video and stock photography. The clips that show up in the first few pages of search results are the ones that tend to get bought. And so it's important that your clips are easy to discover. Now, this process is called keywording. And what does that really mean, Dennis? That's really the most important feature about the contributor, making the difference. You could have the most beautifully lit, commercially viable shot in the world, but if you don't do a good job on keywording it, it's, it's not going to show up in those top results, and you're absolutely right. Those first few pages are probably the most important ones. So keywording really ultimately means content intelligence, right? Okay. So you're giving our system the ability to understand what this is about, and you're connecting, you're, by putting in those keywords, you're connecting with that customer. So they're, they have something in, in their mind that they have a vision for a clip that they need or a search that they need to do. They put in a few simple keywords. In, in Adobe Stock and search for it, the idea is like making sure that when they type in those keywords and you've got the clip, right. that it's going to be the one that shows up first. Because I may want to be as specific as saying, Asian woman drinking coffee red cup, because that's what I need for my story. Exactly. <laughs> and, and if the clip is that specific, it's going to come right to the top, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we have a number of different filtering options, and I think if there's contributors that are getting more serious about this, then again, it spends t it, it, it's worth it to spend time on the Adobe Stock site. So, for example, you can search um, via, like I said, with people. You can search uh, via um, commercial and editorial licenses and all kinds of different things that are going to make a big difference. There's color searches. You can search mm -hmm. by color. You can actually upload a visual uh, that it'll do visual matching. Mm -hmm. And I also like you have a new one for depth of field searching right. that's that's currently in beta but is coming out. So if you want well, that it's on the site field. right now, but it's not technically something that we fully put into production. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. Again, one of the things that we're doing, we're, we're branching out a little bit, but the idea is that we're trying to make the customer experience read their mind, if you will, right. and connect them with your content. In other words, if your content is the perfect match, we want to do everything we can. But right now, today, keywording is the, the glue and the centerpiece for connecting your content with the customer. Now, talking about reading minds, and this is an area that sounds almost science fiction-like. It's amazing how much things have come, but there's been a lot of technological advances in what's typically referred to as machine learning. And the addition of GPU acceleration, uh, typically with graphics cards, have allowed for huge processing gains to do analysis and processing of visual information. So while the end user can do some keywording, which we'll talk about in a sure. moment, Adobe jumpstarts that process. You guys have a, I don't know, I don't want to call it a supercomputer, but you have this technology called Adobe Sensei that you're right. using across all your products. You can actually look at a clip and come back and tell us what's in that shot by analyzing it. Yeah, absolutely. Adobe Sensei is this very powerful suite of technologies and we have so many plans for it, specifically in Adobe Stock. I mean. Um, for example, the aesthetic search that you just talked about, it's like I could take an image that maybe I'm a customer and I'm like, this is kind of what I want, right. but it's not really what I want. Take that, drag it up onto the Adobe Stock site. It says, oh, okay, let me look. I'm going to look at the composition. I'm going to look at the yeah. color. I'm going to look at the subject matter. Oh, I realize that that's a person. There's two people here and they're holding an umbrella on the left-hand side. Yeah kind of come up with the, that kind of stuff. It is almost like science fiction. It's curation. Instead of the customer having to think of everything, you are actually looking at the shot and trying to recognize what's in it. And then the person uploading can decide to use that or not use it, right? They're not forced to use all those keywords that are automated. Yeah, exactly. So again, we want to make the experience easy for the customer, but what you're talking about there is making it easy for the contributor because like no one ever said, wow, keywording is super fun, <laughs> right? But It's kind of like organizing your sock drawer. Right, it is. It's, <laughs> you it's, need it. <laughs> you need it, but you, it's not a lot of fun, right? So we right. want to try and make it as easy as possible because, again, content intelligence is the key to becoming a successful contributor when it comes to getting payouts and making revenue. So when I upload all of my clips, it's going to analyze those clips and pre-tag them with suggested keywords that I can decide to keep or reject, right? Right, so that's that's a great point. We will automatically populate up to 25 keywords based upon our confidence level. Mm -hmm. So if we have a fairly good confidence level that this is 
people in a forest walking with a child, then we're right. gonna try and populate all those kinds of keywords. But you might not be able to say, oh, that's the Pacific Northwest, and I might wanna add that as a manual keyword. Absolutely, that's the perfect example of where we might say, uh, you know, forest and trees, but you're saying Pacific Northwest, Rocky Mountains, or whatever, sure. those kinds of details are really important. Okay, because sometimes that does matter. For some users, they don't care, but I was doing a stock search the other day, and the geographic location was important. I just didn't need a forest. I needed a forest that would be in Germany, because the client was producing a video for a German audience, and the last thing we wanted was for somebody who probably would know, go, oh, that tree doesn't grow in Germany, and right. You know, those are some of the things where it actually does matter. The more discerning customer is interested in specificity. Oh, we want to have geolocation. We want diversity. We want to know that we can get a shot from a global marketplace so that if we're saying, oh, this is a shot of Japan, it's not just a area at a theme park in the US or something. They want people to really tag it and make it discoverable, right? Again, these are some of the details that I think can really make the difference between a good performing photo or video clip and a really great performing photo and video clip. You're right, absolutely getting the diversity, getting the location, the authenticity is super important. Example for you is like I have one of the, the photos, the few photos that have sold really well for me is uh, I went to Gettysburg, which is nearby, mm -hmm. the, the Civil War battlefield. Yeah. And so I was on Little Round Top, which was one of the key areas where mm -hmm. the battle, ba battle raged. Right. And you, it, it populated and said hills and green and right. you know, uh, trees and, and all that other stuff. But Little Round Top, Gettysburg, those are the keywords that I believe have really made the difference in that particular image. Yeah, and I even found myself doing that the other day. My daughter was working on a report for school and I'm a big proponent of actually, you know, licensing content and putting right. stuff. And so rather than, you know, we got very specific and we were able to find some images that were what we needed. Now, as we're tagging things with keywords, uh, how important is it to do things like alternate spellings? Or, you know, let's say uh, we have someone of an ethnicity. Do we need to tag it with Asian, Japanese? You know, do, do sure. we need to do multiple tags for things like that? So I think um, multiple spellings, I would kind of defer to the contributor and think about, you know, what those words are. You know, if there's, for example, a word that is really commonly misspelled a certain way, you know that. Um, but hey, I don't need to worry, worry about plural, right? Like if I have a shot of pumpkins, I don't need to upload pumpkin and pumpkins as a keyword. That's again a, a call. You can actually do that and there may be a case, you know, there might be a person that types in pumpkin but is really in their brains thinking like I want to patch a field of pumpkins. Okay. And so it's, it's up to you. Um, I think when it comes to what customers are wanting today, diversity is super, super important. Um, so I think, you know, typing in the ethnicity if that's valuable because people are looking specifically for diversity, right? And so definitely kind of do that and then take care of the ordering. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And as these clips are uploaded and auto keyworded, what sort of strategy should I apply to adding my own additional keywords? Is there anything else? We've talked about you know, alternate spellings or additional words, but do you have any best practices? You know, you get to talk to a lot of folks who do succeed at stock. Is there any technique or logic that stands out as being more likely to succeed? Well, I think the biggest thing that is different about Adobe Stock that I think is great for the contributor and the consumer is the idea of we weight our keywords, right? So what that means is it's actually less keyword work for you to do. Okay. Because some people will, you know, religiously type in 50 keywords and at, by the time you get to keyword 50, it's a little species, right? You know, it's just like, oh, does that really fit that scene? Oh, okay. Right. So. Someone searching for eagle probably isn't searching for feather and talon. Right. Okay. Um, but the, the, the idea is that the first seven to ten keywords kind of are going to get a greater weight in Adobe stock, meaning that they're going to be the more heavily weighted when people type eagle. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's going to be, a, you know, that's the centerpiece of the shot. Well, then that's got to be a keyword that is first or second, depending upon the composition of the shot. So in that example, I might want to make sure that if it was a flying eagle, it was eagle, flight, sky, right. clouds, right. describing the, the scene and not right. worry so much about other stuff versus, you know, eagle, sitting, trees, you know, describe the scene so that someone doing a search could find it with more specificity. Because I think as customers start to do more searches, 
they get a little frustrated. If they just type in the word eagle, they're getting too many hits. So they start adding descriptive phrases, right? Right. You can do single words separated by a comma. You can use, also do compound words. So you could okay. say green forest as opposed to green and forest. Oh, nice. Another thing that would be in the case of your uh, eagle example, it's a bald eagle maybe, right? So we want to make sure that we say a bald eagle. And what I found in terms of nature stuff, some of the more successful contributors that are shooting nature content will use the Latin or scientific name oh, as nice. well and include that. So, for example, I had a shot of a spider mm -hmm. uh, and I went on Google or whatever and found out, oh, it's that. It's that Latin or whatever the scientific name and made sure I threw that in there. So the broadcaster doing the nature show or the scientist that needs it for a presentation yeah. can find it. Makes sense. Yeah, and then there, even things like, again, the spider. We think we say spider, but do we want to talk about throwing in the word arachnid? Okay. So sometimes there is such a thing as keyword spamming for us. Right. So it's when you see people just like boom, 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 boom. Don't There's go to the thesaurus and copy and paste. Right. But okay. be thoughtful about it. Um, I think Adobe's doing a great job at taking a lot of the burden off you by giving you a lot of keywords uh, right off the bat. And then you can reorder those. You can simply look at that and start dragging the keywords in the priority order that you want. Add the ones that you want, and Adobe takes care of it with the weighting, so ultimately you don't have to enter in as many keywords as you might think. And I can do this keywording when it's convenient to me, right? Like if I set up a batch upload and it goes to my contributor portal area, that's great. But then I can just go to the coffee shop and take out my tablet and sit there and, and tag in keyword, right? Or I can, yeah. while I'm waiting at the airport for a flight, go through and get my clips cleaned up when I have downtime. Right, so there's a couple processes, uh, or a couple uh, steps, I would think, in the overall contributor process. So first, we obviously shoot the content. Right. Second, we're going to go into an editor like Premiere Pro, clip the content, right? And then, you know, maybe a color grade or whatever, and then export it. Then we've uploaded it through Premiere up to Adobe Stock. And then it's sitting in our contributor portal. That's the next step. I mean, we can, until you add the keywords, tell Adobe Stock that it doesn't have people, so therefore it doesn't need a model release or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, and then hit we the haven't submit. gotten to the point of the dogs needing that. That's right. Releases. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, and then hit the submit button. Nothing is submitted to Adobe Stock for moderation, for review, for submission yeah. until you hit that submit button. So you're absolutely right. You can go at any time. It's like, hey, I'm busy shooting today. That's when that's where my brain's at. Yep. And then you know uh, I'm going to go to the coffee shop, like you said, and just bring my laptop or whatever and start doing the keywording. Great. Well, this makes it easy to get organized. Well, I think this is the step that a lot of people skip because as creative professionals, we're used to our individual reputations sort of preceding us for our clients. Mm -hmm. We're used to being able to show people our demo reel and we've captured their attention. But really, and I don't mean this in a negative way, you're competing in a global market. And what matters is the quality of your work. But when there's lots of quality and there's lots of choices, it's what gets found is what sells, right? Absolutely. This is the distinction between, again, being a, you know, this might be something that you discover is your calling, if you will, right? Because you, you love shooting, you love seeing, and it's funny, I talk to a lot of guys that do that, but if you don't figure out the whole keywording aspect of it, you're not maximizing your business and revenue potential with it. All right, Dennis, that makes a lot of sense. Our video needs to be able to be discovered. I'd like to dig a little bit deeper into some strategies for success, as well as talk through a couple of case studies on what really works for people. So we'll tackle that next.